the universe that we live in, it could have taken many different forms. And scientists have come to a consensus, not just Christian scientists, but scientists in general, that there are dozens of fundamental features of the universe that needed to be precisely the way they are for life to be possible. Not just life on the planet Earth, not just life as we know it, but any form of life anywhere in the universe. Let's take just one example. If the explosive force of the initial expansion of the universe had been different in one part in 10 to the 60th, no life would have been possible. In other words, the percentage difference that you could have while still accommodating the possibility of life is a zero followed by a period followed by 57 zeros followed by a one. If the initial expansion had been even just the slightest bit weaker, gravity would have made the universe collapse back in on itself almost immediately, far too quickly for any form of life to develop. If the initial expansion had been just the slightest bit stronger, the universe literally would have dispersed into thin air. Particles would have wound up so quickly, so far from each other, that all you could have gotten would have been cold, simple molecules. Nothing like the sort of complex chemistry that's required for any form of life. Sir Roger Penrose, emeritus professor at Oxford, one of the world's leading mathematical physicists, he estimates that the overall difference you could have, if you take into account all the fundamental features that needed to have this precision, the overall difference you could have is less than one part in 10, raised in turn to the power of 10, raised in turn again to the power of 123. I would write that out as a percentage for you, but even if I could turn all the matter in the universe into paper, I would still have far too little paper to print the required number of zeros. In fact, I would need more zeros than there are particles in the universe. Sir Fred Hoyle, the Cambridge astronomer, one of the 20th century's most significant scientific thinkers, he compared the random emergence of even the simplest cell to the likelihood of a tornado blowing through a junkyard and just happening to produce a perfect Boeing 747 airplane. These are the sorts of odds we're talking about. What explains this incredible precision? The Bible says that you are a word. Not just a random collection of genetic letters, but a word. In fact, it goes further than that. It claims that you're a poem uses the Greek word poema, where we get the English word poem from. That word is used in the Bible to describe only two things, the natural world and you and me. Are you a random collection of genetic letters? Or are you a poem that was carefully and intentionally crafted by God himself? 